home. Welcome Green Country Sports Network from Vertigris. Uh, we have had a lot of technical issues this morning. We apologize for our late start. But we're just very lucky to very lucky to be online with, with our technical issues. So with 6.14 to go in the first period, Tahlequah trails 4-2 to two to Kiefer. Kiefer uh, is a senior-dominated team with some a couple of 6'5 guys, and uh, so they're definitely not small. Cole Robertson with a turnaround jumper from the post. Uh, got a nice entry pass from Zeke Guerrero. Keeper's heading on down the floor. Telequa's in a man-to-man a man -to -man right now. And got a nice drive from number zero. We let him penetrate all the way to the uh, line. Robertson with the ball, looking for a pass over to Donovan Smith. And he penetrates all the way to the rack, drops it in, ties it up 6-6. And we're here with Craig Wing, Ryan Hosley, and Coach Elsie Miller uh, to broadcast the game from Vertigo Stadium. Donovan on a rebound, Donovan Smith Bring it up over to Bryson Smith. And both teams are in a in a man-to-man -man right now. Cash McElvain pull-up jumper. Boom from the corner. He got, he got a nice release on that shot. So both teams are getting the shots they want right now out of our defense. Now, Tigers missed a couple of early ones there, Gary. And uh, had a steal and turned back over to Kiefer. Yeah, Bryson Smith got his hand on the ball, but uh, Kiefer is able to get it back. Good job by Cole Robertson on uh, Wrestler right there. Wrestler has, uh, I think, four of their six. So. Yeah, uh, Telequa did a real nice job of talking to each other on defense and switching up. We're awfully close here, and we apologize for our... Uh, Three-point basket there by number two, Owen Murphy. Apologize for our technical difficulties we're having here. Over to Donovan, looking to penetrate. They're going to call him on that spin move down there, Gary. That's a tough, tough call because postmen like that move. Yeah. Donovan does for sure. Two-point basket off the glass by Owen Murphy. He's now got five in the game. And they've uh, been able to penetrate for a layup several times off our defense. That's at least their third one. Wrestler got two real early, and then uh, Murphy now has a three and a two right behind it. So uh, those two right now carrying the scoring for Kiefer. Yeah, and we'd like to thank some of our sponsors, uh, uh, First State Bank, uh, they're our pregame sponsor. We didn't have any pregame on this one. Hopefully we will next game. Uh, like to talk about Armstrong Bank, uh, another sponsor of ours, Laura Lunch State Farm. And get ready to come back to this game. And Telequa's getting ready to throw the ball in here. It's early game. I know these boys have been off for two weeks. They've probably been used to sleep until midnight or later. It's, it's the early matinee game at 1034 today. Yeah, so. it's, uh, it's difficult to, to get in the flow of the game here early. Whoa, Bryson Smith with a nice pull. Shot up. that one off the free, free throw line, extended right there. That's kind of a lost art in basketball. It's a lot of layups and a lot of three-pointers, but not many of those. Uh-oh. Oh, Smith on the rebound. You can Elbow tell. shot put up by uh, Adams there. No good. Turned over by the Tigers on the other end. You 
you can tell Kiefer is uh, senior dominated because they're, they're doing all the things you need to do. Uh, two point basket right there, Will Adams. Third shot at the basket that possession. We'll get Bryson Smith on a push off, I believe. Uh, Gary, we actually have the uh, scoreboard here on our end that tells us the fouls and everything. We can't see anything on the other board. So with the delay there, I may be a little bit behind on a couple of buckets and uh, maybe a foul or two, but hopefully we'll get caught up at some point. Yeah, we'll. It's a, this is the toughest we've had to call against. Two-point basket on the putback. Got Miguel in the uh, ball game for us. Yeah. So we're down 15 to 10 at 2.03 to go in the first period. So Bryson moving it around, trying to get our offense set up here for us. Over to Zeke out on the elbow, over the corner. McElvain looking for a three. Got it. And Zinger. Good shooter. Pulls us 15 to 13 with a minute 39. We're hoping we can play a little defense here. You know, Kiefer comes in four and three on the year. Not a bad ball club. They've played some good teams throughout the early part of the season. So this is not a real big surprise. McElvain over to Cole Robertson for the basket and one. Good jump stop layup right there. You just talked about that, Gary. Cole Robertson comes up with a nice one, plus one. Here's our chance to take the lead for the first time today. And misses the free throw. Yeah. Boy, in close ball games, you've got to hit those. Coach, we can tell from up here that uh, Kiefer's well coached, they're big. They look like they've got a lot of experience. And rebound by McGill. Oh, what a pass. Over to Joe da Daughtery. Uh, Smith. That looked like the post route there. Nice, nice pass in for a layup. Daughtery got the bucket there? Yes. That's our first lead of the game. Uh, so. Playing some better defense here. Got to get down and stop that baseline drive. <laughs> Gary, we've got that rail in there. Was that a walk or was that step out of bounds? I walk. Walk. And uh, that's one of the basic fundamentals of basketball, cut off that baseline. Yeah. Well, we gave it up the first two times down the floor to Wrestler, and he got two two easy putbacks because somebody helped on the baseline and left wrestler open in the middle. Wow. What Cash McElvain, he is driving shot. lay up there. And I'm thinking he's totally out of control. He knew what he was doing. Good spin move on the baseline. So Telequa's uh, run off a 9-0 run. Nice spin move there by number 31 as we end the period. That was uh, Stryker Johnson. Yeah. And we'll be right back to the Green Country Sports Network. <laughs> that is literally the funniest thing ever. And then I said. <laughs> it wasn't, but this guy could use a win. Even if it's not as big of a win as I get with free Kasasa Cash checking. Kasasa Cash pays me a really high rate and refunds ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. So I feel like a queen. Has a mega bank ever made you feel that way? Or is it more like this guy? Take back banking with Kasasa Cash. Get Kasasa Cash at First State Bank. And welcome back to the Green Country Sports Network. We're here with Craig Wing, Ryan Hosley, Coach Hills, and Miller, and Gary Wing. And uh, we're glad you're joining us here today. And uh, thanks to uh, State Representative Bob Ed Culver for uh, helping sponsor us. Chris, Chris is quick lube. Thank you guys. Coach, what do you think so far? We ended up on a 9-0 run to pull back into the lead. 
Yeah, after falling down early there, of course, Kiefer came out and got the first two easy buckets. First three buckets, I believe it was, before the Tigers scored, and uh, we came roaring back. And I, th- I saw a little bit of a defensive intensity change in the last three minutes there. Yeah. I think that made the big difference, Gary. Yeah, they didn't have any wide open layups like they had earlier. But it's just like it's early. They're not used to being up this early. It takes a while to wake up. And like you said, two weeks off, it's tough coming back. It, uh, it just seems like a Saturday game to me, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what a pass. Nice pass Bryson inside. Smith. Miguel Rodriguez by way of Bryson Smith. That's two tremendous passes he's had so far. Well, you know, personally, I think that's probably the best part of his game. He. He's a tremendous passer when he's got, got it in his mind, and that's what he wants to be, and he makes everybody else on the floor better. Two-point basket again there by number 31 for Kiefer. And Donovan uh, didn't challenge him. He's trying to stay out of foul trouble. Whoa, he got his shot blocked, a kind of a wild attempt. That last basket was by number 31, Stryker Johnson. 6'5", junior. Junior, senior, laden ball club here, and they've got a little bit of height, too. Yeah, they do. Got a couple of 6'5". They're actually taller than we are as a team. And uh, Donovan attempted to get a block, had both hands surrounded it, and they called a foul for some reason. Wrestler misses the first of two. That's first team foul of the second period against the Tigers. Wrestler misses the second. Boys, you've got to box them. They're boxing them out, but they're letting them push them totally underneath the goal, and then when they shoot, it it bounces back over their head. uh... Three-point basket put up by Kiefer's number five. I don't know why they don't call a foul on that. You That's just number two, I guess. as hard as you can on uh, free throws, and they don't call a foul on it. Over to Zeke Guerrero, he's back. Murphy guarding him. Nice roll by Miguel Rodriguez. Got the shot blocked. That's where that size comes in. Yeah. That was a good screen and roll. It was well yeah. executed. This. Striker's about 6'5", and... Uh, Miguel, I think, is at uh, about 6'2", something like that, if that big. Uh, he doesn't look that big. Nice baseline cutoff there. And uh, Zeke Can't. Guerrero kept on getting a layup. I think they got away with a good little walk before that uh, attempt. I couldn't see what happened underneath that rail, so. Daughter, he almost got it. He had that and zeroed in. Cole Robertson now guarding Stryker, and Stryker pulls up on the jumper short. Rebound by Bryson Smith. Trying to set something up over here. Uh, Four out, one in. Guerrero to Daughtery to Smith. Jumper, other elbow now. He misses that one. Boy, it looked good. Look good. We're going to talk about the Tournament of Champions here, uh, here in a few minutes. Saw some really good basketball up there. Oh, somebody grabbed it. Cole did a good job of. Somebody's going to get a bump foul there. He's going to shoot two. Jackson Morley going to the line on those 6'3 senior kids. A lot of experience out there. Not sure who they gave that foul to, Gary. Uh, Miguel Rodriguez. Rodriguez picked it up. Okay. That'll be the Tigers' second foul of the period. Ryan, was it Daughtery? Daughtery? I'm sorry. Daughtery got it. Okay. Well, we can't see underneath that rail. That's. And that happened right on the baseline. So Worley misses a bump. And Daughtery with the rebound. 
Tigers hold into a one-point lead with 4.57 to go in the game in the second period. We really slowed down here. See, Guerrero! Oh, that's his shot right there. No second attempts. That's one of the big things right now, Gary. Oh, push off their offensive foul. And they're going to well, call a block. I don't think they're going to give it to him. Coach Jones is pleading his case, but uh, apparently it's not going to change it. Daughtery got that one too. That'll be Daughtery's second personal. Out on uh, Cash McElvain there, so. Couldn't quite reach it, could he? No. Nope. Gary, they're going to have to find a way to get some second attempts down there on the offensive end. Yeah, we've got our very small lineup in there right now. A uh, bunch of young kids. Wrestler gets the easy layup there and gets fouled in the process. Uh, number 11. Actually, that striker Johnson got that bucket and he'll get one. Gage Hodson on the foul. Well, right now they're Hodson on the foul. Right now they are pretty well dominating on the rebounding. Yeah, pretty much on both ends. Yeah. We haven't had any second attempts yet that I can remember. But Cole Gold put one up, got it blocked. He's going to pick up the body foul, and the ball just wouldn't quite climb over. I'm usually a homer on refereeing, but I, I thought that guy had his hand right on top of the ball, and I'm not sure. But we'll take it. I, I agree with you. Cole misses the first of two. I think he's 0 for 2 today. This one's going in. I got the feeling. Second free throw coming up. Ooh. Off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound by... I had, a, I had a feeling, but it was the wrong feeling, apparently. Oh, wow. Follow-up offensive oh, rebound wow. by Wrestler. Wow. Nobody watched him. Now, Owen Murphy put up that left-handed shot from the baseline, missed everything, and Wrestler picked it up and put it in. And Cash McElvain slips on the slick spot on the floor and has a turnover. So here comes Vertigris, 25-21 lead. It's been kind of a game of runs here in the first half. Yeah. Keeper. Is, keeper, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keeper's got their. We're at Vertigris, but it's awful hard sometimes to. Oh, nice cut. That young man really reached. Striker, or Worley again on the layup. That was almost a struggle there, Gary. Yeah, our defense has really gone to sleep on us. Bryson again from the three-point line at uh, the right side of the lane. No good. Hit the outside of the rim. So we got Bryson Smith, Zeke, Cole Robertson, Miguel Rodriguez, and McElvain on the floor. The big guy, a wrestler, Ryan Wrestler, steps out, gets a three. Our defense is just uh, gone to sleep. Tigers went from a 21-20 lead down by nine. Yep, that was quick too. We we uh, we've got to get the, our young kids to, to waking up a little bit more here today. But anyway, uh, tournament champions last week, our, our girls uh, were able to win two out of their three. I talked to David Qualls earlier about that last night, and that was one of the things he, he was impressed with. They lost to a very, very good Lincoln Christian ball club. Now, they're going to be one of the top 
toughest teams we're going to have to battle in Class 5A. I'd like to play them again, LZ, because we just, our shooting was awful that night, and still yeah. we were within striking distance. So. Yeah, I don't think we shot the ball very well. I think David said we were in the 20s yeah. percentage-wise, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, I think Corey had only like five or six points in that ball game, and you know we can't live with that. Two-pointer catch, McIlvain. Yeah, we came out of that timeout, set up a play, and it worked to perfection. So timeouts are just a miracle on the uh, Oh, what a move. Nice post step through there oh, by move. number 31, Stryker Johnson gets the two-pointer. That was a very good step through, fake step through. If you got a good kid inside like that, that's, oh, tried to force that one. Cole was double teamed down on the block as he tried to make the cut. Bryson tried to force it in there. It'll still be Tiger basketball out of bounds though. Yeah. Cash in the corner, three point basket up, no good. Once again, rebounded by Kiefer. Yeah, we had position, it just uh, not tall enough to get up to the ball. Get a, I believe it's going to be a held ball. Heard the announcer earlier announcing that we had a jump ball on the floor, and <laughs> I was informed earlier in the year by one of our officials that we no longer have a jump ball except to start the game. Yeah, that uh, that was uh, unusual. Uh, nobody, uh, Bryson was just laying on the ball, and the referee blew the whistle. Yeah. Oh. Cole tried to. Push it into Miguel and no good. Boy, somebody got away with a draw. <laughs> Gary, there was definitely, I could see that from here. <laughs> We've got kind of a bad vantage point on the Kiefer end down here. We're looking through a rail and over a table and everything, but uh, boy, there was some contact right yes, there. there that, was. And he, nothing was called until the ball got on the floor and they're gonna give it back to Kiefer. It looked like a bowling ball heading down there trying to get a strike there. Zeke Guerrero got a hand on it. Stay with him. Uh -oh. Push Kiefer into the backcourt. Oh, double fake. Missed the easy layup. We're going to get it over the back on, I believe that's going to be 31. 31. That's going to be Cole Johnson. Robertson. I'm sorry. Cole Robertson did a good job of uh, getting his hands on that ball. And Got a little aggressive. So Telequaw is getting ready to throw the ball in. It's 32 to 23 with 106 in the second period. Yeah. Tigers have been sitting on 21 since about uh, four and a half minutes to go in the second period. So there we're going to get the foul reach over. Post entry number 34. He's a big 6'4. Junior. Now that's Braden Holt reaching over the back. His first personal, second team foul. Cash uncontested three from the corner, no good. Tigers running back on defense. Gage was in a good spot. He just couldn't bring it down for the rebound attempt. Long three, Webster, no good. Rebounded, offensive board by Kiefer, and we're gonna get a block there. Wow, <laughs> that's tough. You just stand there, mind your own business, and get run, get run over. Was that Hodgson that picked that one up? Uh, yes. I believe so. Yeah, he was just basically trying to get out of the way, I think. And His second, well, uh, uh, I, the big problem right there, Gary, Tigers just didn't block out well on the rebound. No. Now this man to man, we're, we're watching a ball a lot when they shoot and forgetting where your guy's at. And your guy is going to go get the ball and you're just standing there watching. So that's, we're that's something to work on. We're definitely getting beat on the boards on both ends of the floor right now. Morley gets both of them at the free throw line. 
extends the keeper lead to 34-23 now after Tigers were leading 21-20 at about the four-minute mark. McElvain with that pull up from the corner again. We needed that, Coach. It's been a long dry spell. Steal by uh, Bryson Smith, stepped in on the passing lane. Lead pass to Guerrero, got it. At the buzzer. Yeah. That's a good way to end the second period. 34-25, Kiefer on top. Tigers are going to have to regroup here at halftime, Gary, and get on the boards a little bit. Yeah, it's just they're, they're just putting a lot more effort into it than we are. Well, we, we really haven't done a, a good job yet of blocking out staying on the board. And we'll be right back. Green Country Halftime Show. I'm Dave at Green Country Funeral Home. The only locally owned funeral home in Tahlequah. Owned by my wife, Renita, and myself. We're also proud to be the only funeral home in the area with an on-site crematory to meet the needs of our community, your families. Our family at Green Country Funeral Home works to assist and guide you through the many details of your family's final needs and wishes. Green Country Funeral Home, where we don't work for a corporation, we work for you. You're watching Telequal Tiger Basketball on the Green Country Sports Network. Today's game is brought to you by First State Bank. I'll take a grande, no foam, triple cap, double pump vanilla latte with three and a half ice cubes, slightly shaken, extra whip. Yeah, that's gonna be an upcharge. Great! This one is on my Casasa cash back checking account. Uh huh. Casasa pays me cash back on everyday debit card purchases, plus refunds on ATM withdrawal fees. Go on, take back banking and treat yourself to monthly cash rewards. Get Casasa cash back at First State Bank. Are you a fitness beginner who is struggling to lose weight? Maybe you've tried tons of different diets, but nothing seems to work. Maybe you're looking in the mirror, you're not happy about the reflection that's staring back at you. At Elevated Aesthetics, we help fitness beginners learn how to lose 15 to 20 pounds in six months or less, guaranteed without having to give up their favorite foods. On average, each client that joins loses at least 28.6 pounds inside of the program. So if you're interested, text INFO to 918-265-4477. That's 918-265-4477. Chat soon. If you suffer with foot pain, you should consider getting your feet adjusted by a hand and foot chiropractor. Hi, my name is Dr. Kelly Calloway, and I'm a hand and foot chiropractor in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. There are 26 bones in each foot, all of which can be adjusted. When one or more of the foot bones lose their healthy alignment, it can lead to a foot problem. We help conditions such as plantar fasciitis, heel spurs, and toe pain. A gentle chiropractic foot adjustment will restore healthy alignment and function to the joint and tissues in the feet. This will correct the underlying cause of most foot conditions. Our patients love having their feet adjusted, and you will be amazed by how good you will feel after you have your feet adjusted. Call our office today to receive your complimentary consultation for your painful foot condition.
Welcome back to Halftime, Green Country Sports Network broadcasting here. We're with uh, Coach Elsie Miller, uh, Ryan Hosley on the camera, Craig Wings, our producer, and I'm Coach Gary Wing. So welcome, uh, and thank you to David Dick and Green Country Sports, uh, Green Country Funeral Home for sponsoring this halftime show. I was talking to uh, David and Renita this week, and their son Joshua is uh, still uh, an excellent college runner in, up north, and uh, he a senior this year, uh, or last year running eligibility, and he's planning on having a great indoor and spring season. He's just doing a fantastic job up that way. Uh, so Coach Miller's got some stats for us here. Well, with technical difficulties, about all I've got right now are total points. They've got uh, Ryan Ressler, their big guy in the center there, number 35, with uh, 11 points at halftime. He's in double figures, and Stryker Johnson has eight points, seven points for Jackson Worley, eight for... Owen Murphy and two for Cason Webster and Will Adams. For the Tigers, we've got four points for Cole Robertson, two points Donovan Smith, four points for Bryson Smith, two for Miguel Rodriguez, two points for Jordan Daughtery, 11 points for Cash McElvain and Zeke Guerrero with two. So We've got the scoring all caught up now. Had to run down and get that from the official book down there, but hopefully we'll we'll be okay from this point on. Yeah, we've got uh, both teams are getting ready to head back to court. Ready to start the second half. Uh, they we ended on a little run. We were just about to lose contact with them and actually nice started run. the second on a pretty good run too, Gary, and then hit a dry spell. Yep. And then finally it came back toward the end, like you said. But I'll tell you the difference right now. Uh, you, you may be thinking the same thing. Tiger's going to have to do a better job rebounding. Yeah. Right now we've been beating on the boards bad. Yeah, that's just a, a lack of effort. Oh, my gosh. Got an offensive foul trying to set a screen. And, uh, and, Is that uh, on cash? Apparently so. And uh, I don't know if it's his third or I can't Well, tell. I have him for one. So one. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean anything because well, I know we missed some on this end without the visibility to see that. It's going to be hard to keep track of that. But. And, some, uh, and, and a lot of times you'll take a player out to coach him up and uh, make sure that doesn't happen again, whatever happened. Well, I think he set a screen for Donovan. Donovan got the bucket and everything. Defensive rebound, Bryson Smith right there for the Tigers. That looks a little better. We we went up that rebound like we wanted it. Yeah, had good position on it. Daughtery over to Donovan at top of circle. Oops, tried to try to force it into Cole. And ball got tipped. Donovan Smith goes after it on the floor. And Tiger started the period, so Kiefer's going to get the hell ball. Not jump ball. Not. <laughs> this uh, game of basketball is always changing. Always changing. Now, we just saw the same screen right there, and we fought through it. Somebody lost their man, had a wide open three out of the corner, and he, he nailed it. I believe that was Webster, number zero on the three. So we're setting up a play. We're going to try that offside screen again. Yep. They're going to get uh, Zeke for a walk right there. Yep. Ball fake. Shuffle your feet. They call it whether you do or not anymore, it seems like. But uh, It's a turnover either way. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Bryson got beat on the back door cut. Uh, Worley, I believe, got that one. That's a perfect example of standing there watching the ball and, uh, instead of what, playing your man. Yeah, he just blew by him and got the back door cut. Bryson entered the paint. No good on the easy jumper. 
Rebound tipped out to Donovan. Joe Daughtery got a good rebound there. Got some good ball movement going here. Relaxed on that pass, trying to make it around that. He did the right thing, stepped to the right, made the pass, but it was just a weak pass. Yeah, they were Ball tipped out of bounds. Tiger's going to get it back. Oh. Foul's going to charge to number one, Will Adams. And two shots for Donovan Smith. Uh, we're 27 and they're 39. This is Donovan gets the first. Got a good, good, good looking shot. Cash McElvain returning, Gary. Yeah, he's our leading scorer and uh, he's kind of been carrying us here in the first half, scoring wise. So second shots up and in and out, ready. no good. Defensive rebound by Johnson. Kiefer walking it up. So we're kind of got it into a half court trap here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Rebound by Bryson. Long, fa long pass up court, uh, tipped by Kiefer out of bounds. Good Kiefer. hustle there by. Kiefer must be pretty quick, coach. Yeah. That's the third. Uh, well, Webster completely uh, across the floor right there and got a hand on that yeah. ball. That's a third pass by Bryson they've got a hand on. Must be quick. Over the seat, back to Bryson. Two-pointer, Cash McElvain in the paint. <laughs> Good ball fake right there and this then step a, through. Yes. That's a post move from the free throw line. Looks so easy. Oh wow, guys! Oh wow! Guys. Give up an easy one on the backside to Jackson Warley. Yeah, they went back door on us, and we're watching the ball. That's twice we've got beat on the back door like that. Warley's now in double figures for the ball game for Kiefer. So all three of their big men are in double figures. Cash McElvain, short jumper, no good from about 12 feet. So we're down by 11 with 422 to go in the third period. And we're into our 1-2-2 zone here. Tigers got to get this lead back to within about five here before the period's over. Short corner pass, tipped out by Bryson Smith. Here comes Cash. Cash is going to explode, take it all the way to the hole, and he gets it too. Good, uh, good job, Cash. He's having a great day today. It just looks so easy to him. Uh oh. Donovan reaches out. He gets driven onto the basket, misses it, pulls it short. Cole Robertson with the uh, picking up the loose ball. Uh oh. Key for coach is not happy with that one. Did they call a technical or a warning? Uh, a warning. Yeah, they'd have to be a warning because they're not going to shoot it. Yeah. Well, you know, can't. McElvain dribble no. penetrates, finds Donovan Smith. Donovan underneath to Cole. Cole off the glass and good. All right, forced that one up strong. He was uh, kind of hit on the shot and still made it in there. Coach, you wanted them to get closer. We're down to seven now. Well, you've got to get strong like that inside, especially when you're looking at guys like this that are, you know, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, in there. You, you've got to use the up fake, and you've got to go strong. That's exactly what he did on that one. Yeah, 30-second timeout for Kiefer. And Kiefer is going to take this one. Yeah, 3.09 to go, Coach. We pull it back seven. We're, we're definitely in this ball game. It's nothing to get panicky about. Well, I'd, I'd be happy if we get it back within three or four here before the period or even take a lead with three to three oh nine to go. We scored a bunch in that second period early in the first three minutes. We can do the same here. Sure. As good as we shoot the ball, uh, you know, we're we're not out of this by any stretch. But well, we, we've got to get some points on the board by Donovan Smith. We've got one field goal so far for Donovan. 
One field goal for Miguel Rodriguez, one for uh, Bryson Smith. So those three guys have... Looks like we're back in our man-to-man -to, -man to start off this fourth period. Went to zone for just a little bit. Good help there and recover. Bryson Smith on the show and then recover on his man with the ball. Oh. Uh, that's a, could have been a walk. That's the same move that Donovan made earlier. Three point basket by number two. Owen Murphy on the bucket. Cash McElvain for three off the front of the rim, no good. Boy, I'd like to see Zeke go get a rebound or at least do something. He just stood there and watched the shot, Kent. Well, that's what we've seen a lot of, especially in the first half, and done a little bit better job, especially on the defensive end in the second half, but. My gosh, you'd like to see him go get an offensive rebound, get a second, third shot, Gary. Yeah. Zeke did a lot better job of fighting through that screen. Another offensive rebound by Kiefer. Block shot by Cole There's Robertson. Zeke Guerrero for the three. There's Got it. Shot. Yes. There we go. That's yeah. what we was asking for, Gary. Money ball there. But that answers their last one. We're still down seven yeah. with 135 to go. So we're back to our zone defense here. Rising out on the point, trying to disrupt things, and oh, uh, that's oh, why do that? Got him a cheap foul, reaching around behind Bryson. him. Bryson's going to pick up the foul right there. His second, to my knowledge. Not real sure on the fouls at this point. Who would he call that on, guys? I couldn't tell. Called two quick fouls on us. Nice walk. Yeah, pretty lucky on that walk right there because as soon as he turned and walked backwards, Cole Robertson reached in. That could have been three in a row. I'm not sure who got the other one, Gary, but it was too quick for us to even catch yeah. it. Zeke and Bryson were both there. I think it was uh, Zeke, but that's just my guess. Donovan Smith's going to take it in there, pull up jumper. He's going to get the bump foul. And the Myers and Bernard foul. Donovan there. Thank you, Craig. And got the handyman. Free throw. We like to get a lot of those Telequa handyman free throws. Donovan gets the first of two. Second one coming up. Yeah. Kiefer substitutes Striker Johnson out. We're going to need these for the rest of the game if we're going to pull back in this. Mm. Uh, Donovan forced that contact. That guy was beating on him, and he just went up and forced it there. Good job, Donovan. Breakaway layup, no good. Partially maybe blocked by Bryson there. Uh, I think so. If not, nothing else. It's great hustle getting down there scaring him a little bit. Oh, great Beautiful play. pick and roll. Oh, and he missed the easy layup. Donovan left-handed layup on the drive after the give and go. That was a beautiful play. We needed that one sorely. That would have put us back within three. Kiefer, long three, no good. Taken by Webster. Bryson Smith on a rebound. We've been needing some rebounds, Coach. We've done a better job in the third goal. period. Yeah, not, not as good as we should, but it's been better. Got a five-point deficit. We can cut this right now. Three by Zeke, Zeke at the Ooh, buzzer. Yes. It's going to be good. Rice and Smith penetrated. They all looked at him and he fired it out to Zeke in the corner. And Zeke Moneyball Guerrero with another three. And we'll be right back, Green Country Sports Network. Family. It's bigger than bloodlines, stronger than DNA. It's the circle we draw around the people that matter the people we care about and care for. Armstrong Bank, 
Strength runs in our family. Welcome back. After a short little break there, we're just ready to start the fourth period here at uh, Verdigris. Kiefer is clinging to a 44-42 lead on the Tigers. We made a great comeback. Yeah, we were period. down 12 at one point, if you remember right, with about three and a half minutes to go. And we were talking about getting on the boards, pull a few rebounds, and and uh, we did just that. We hit some big shots, Zicarero two threes in there to uh, ignite the Tigers a little bit. So, yeah, we cut a 12-point lead back to two. Yeah, great. Uh, I'd like to think the Tigers are in pretty good position right here, I but do we'll too. see. Baker's Furniture sponsoring this game. Uh, I'd like to thank you uh, down there on South Muskogee. Have some great uh, furniture and Two Sisters Financial. Tiger basketball to start the fourth period. Tigers have a chance to take the lead right here. Double high post. Oh, oh wow. nice pit, nice roll by wow. Donovan Smith off the high post. <laughs> that's, that's one of the oldest plays in basketball. It still works. Though. Double high, two low wings, wings come up. They overplay right side, he rolled to the left. Nothing but open lanes, babe. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. Oh. Had a near turnover right there and uh, he turned, a, turned around nobody between him and the goal. His eyes lit up there. Murphy bounced that one off of, uh, I believe it was Donovan's leg down there. So it's going to remain with Kiefer. Five count. Five uh -oh, count. Here goes Zeke Rowe with steal. Run out. Two on one. Go oh, and one. Zeke had a great two Beautiful. on one over to McElvain. Beautiful pass by the Tigers. Wow. That was a turnover by Kiefer, led to a possible three-point play here. Coach, we've taken a lead. Let's just keep the pedal to the metal here. Well, they're on a 4-0 run, start the fourth period. Oh. Cash McElvain at the line, shooting one. And we got it, rattled yeah, around, yeah, but yeah. we'll take it. Now we're in our full court zone press. Uh-oh, Still. Cole Robertson playing that middle spot. Boy, they had a layup. He had a, a skied for that one. That's three turnovers in a row for Kiefer. Going to get a travel there on uh, Donovan trying to thread the needle and take it down the middle of paint. Well, that was a tough pass there. Yeah, lost control of it a little bit. Tough. Cash McElvain sinking. Tigers pull out of the diamond press. Shot taken by Webster or uh, Adams, no good. Boy, he was wide open there from about eight feet. Yeah. And thank goodness, Tigers there got another defensive rebound. There's the one four high. Donovan's going to take baseline jumper, gets it to go. Boy, you don't know how hard that shot is. The degree of difficulty, and he makes it look easy. Yeah, he turned baseline side. It's a, it's a bad angle actually coming back oh, out yeah. to the basket, Gary. Yeah, he. I think he was probably actually behind the backboard when he shot that one. But Donovan, Donovan likes that baseline turn. Yeah, very, and yeah, so soft. Pressure put on by Bryson up top. So we're uh, back to our man. Uh, oh, Bryson. Gosh. Gosh. Murphy gosh, for two gosh, more. Gosh, gosh. He's got thir 13 now for Kiefer. That's their first wide open layup in a while. We've been playing a lot better defense. Cash McElvain and one. Driving Woo. layup got hit from behind. By number two. Uh, Owen Murphy on the foul. They had a great penetration. McIlvain had another, I can do yours better. Uh, Cash McIlvain did a great job of finishing that shot right there. Yeah, he, he got Especially hammered. Especially after good. getting hammered. So second old fashioned three point play right there. All right, let's see, we're in our full court zone press. Cash now got with 21 trapped. points on the ball game. 
Great defense down there. Trapped him in a corner, forced him to call a 30-second uh, timeout. So, uh, yeah, I think them dialing up the pressure here has really changed the course of this game in the last, you know, five minutes of game time. Yeah. Well, it seemed like the first couple minutes of the second period, we, we turned it up a little bit. At the end of the period, we kind of turned it on a couple times there, and then it's done, really done a better job. Yeah. I uh, like to thank Telecore Handyman for sponsoring our free throws, which I have neglected to do. <laughs> uh, so thanks, Telecore Handyman. And Myers and Bernard. Your you hometown real estate team. Hometown real estate. Yes. Anyway, we've jumped out to a six-point lead with 547. The trouble is we haven't been able to keep it. Biggest biggest lead on the scoreboard for the Tigers tonight with, with six at this point. And uh, it'll be Kiefer basketball out of bounds on the far side. Keep keep the defensive pressure going. Bryson let him curl him right there. Zeke with his back to the ball handler. Finally catches up. Easy bucket under there for Will Adams. Gets the two easy. Yeah, that was a good look. Guy drove in there, had nowhere to go, and he just knew right where he would be. A really good pass. He had to thread the needle through the lane to get that there. Donovan. Cole Robertson. Oh, misses the easy gimme. And then Tiger's going to get it back. Leading 52-48 with 5.06 to go in the ballgame. Yeah, guys, I got the scoreboard up, but we don't have the clock up, so you save the time occasionally. That'd be great. 5.06 on the inbound. Cole Robertson, easy turnaround, misses the – a little bit too deep right there Cole, underneath the bucket. Cole, we need you, buddy. Focus. Had two of those right there in succession. Missed it. They're going to call a three on that, and I'm not sure he even touched him. That's going to be on Cole Robertson. Boy, he's had a tough spell here. It's all right. Just focus and finish up strong. At the line, number zero, Cashin Webster. Did he get that first one, Gary? No. Okay. Good. Missed that one. As I say, the ball don't lie. <laughs> We're going to believe That's it today. That's what you get for faking it. <laughs> he may have been. I don't know. We were a long ways away. Rodriguez checks in for Cole Robertson. He finally got the third one to go. So Webster, one for three from the free throw line there. So we're still in our uh, – Kiefer's still putting a man on us. We've been able to get some really good shots here out of their man-to-man -man defense. You got to go. You got to go. Counts on. There's the screen. There's the pick and roll. Two-pointer. Oh, he misses an easy one, Miguel Rodriguez did. Oh that's, that's three the last two trips down the court. Just – Three gimmies, weren't they? Yeah, they're getting contact down low, but those are normally two points. Watch behind you. Long three. Got it. Number zero, Webster. This little zone defense we're in. Is Tie ball game, 52. Here. Sorry, Gary. 52, yeah. 52, 4.06 on the clock. Miguel, nice up fake, got the bucket. Nice entry pass by Cash McIlvain. Yeah, that's good up fake. Waited for him to get up there and start down. Then he went up. Showed a little patience that time. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what. If we had the NBA circle right there, he would have been inside that circle. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Penetrated from the corner on the baseline, like we talked about earlier. Bad stuff happens if they penetrate on the baseline. Yeah, and they got Rodriguez, I believe, on the foul on that one. That's the big guy. Keeper takes the lead by one with 
335 to go. Both teams have been streaky. Ooh, there's a blow. Oh! That's the same thing that happened on the opposite end down there. We get the charge. They got the block. I guess it depends on which official's calling that. Donovan Smith's going to pick up that one. Tigers extended out in their diamond press. Ball tipped. Guerrero's comes up with it. Bryson Smith got a hand on it. Oh, we uh, had a chance for a second for a run out, and this didn't work. Good defense by him. Zeke looking at Donovan. Lob pass in. Donovan's going to turn around, jump shot. It's in. And we're going to get one. That's uh, You mentioned earlier he locks that corner shot. That's five foot out of the corner. I really believe he likes that as well as he does anything. He's pretty solid there. Donovan got the bucket. Him, He's now in uh, double figures. Yeah. That was a really hard shot for me when I was playing coach. Of course, all of them were hard shots. Well, you were like me. me. You were short. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were all hard. I had to double fake in there or something. Donovan gets it, makes the three. We've had uh, our free throw shootings coming back for us. Uh, we've hit uh, five in a row now. So, uh, and an easy uh, layup on the backside. Our back guy, side guy, is watching the ball. That is number 31. That's Stryker Johnson with the easy layup there. Tigers been getting beat on that backside like that. Yeah, we just don't move. Uh, that don't guy's move. just jamming the short corner and going to the glass with it. Donovan Smith tries to find Cole. Probably should have turned around and shot the ball. That's what Dwayne Jones is telling him right now, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, when he gets a position, those guys can't go up with him. He'll, yeah. He's got airspace. Well, I'm, I'm happy to see Dwayne sit there and tell him that because he's been around long enough. He knows that that should have been a shot right so, there. So we're... Bryson, you can pick it up. We've got 57-57 with 201 to go in the ball game. Kiefer's going to come up with that one. That was a I, weird play. I watched that, and I still don't know what happened. Well, the official indicated a kick ball in there somewhere. <laughs> well, I thought he got shoved in the back. And then on top of that, I don't know why he wouldn't pick the ball up. Yeah. It's not a double dribble if you pick it up. Ball's Good loose hustle. in underneath Good the hustle. bucket. Good hustle. Now we got a hell ball. That's going to belong to the Tigers. You know, uh, oh, wait a minute. In the old days, that would have been a walk because he, he picked that up, he rolled over. And, uh, they turned around and gave that back to them. I thought they got the last held ball. But another ball on the floor inside. We got a hand on it. Bryson Smith, I believe, reached in there, Gary. Well, he is everywhere right now on defense. Well, he he needs to be. Tie game with a minute 44 to go here in the fourth. We, we, need, we need to see Bryson turn it on a little bit here. And... When I say that, I don't mean he has to go score. He's got to turn it on, play hard, lights out. Get something going. We don't need another deal like we had last time where I'm not sure how, what happened, but he bobbled the ball and got on the floor. Boy, that referee missed a foul big time on that one. A little bit deep on that shot. But well, yeah, he's, he started out five feet from the end line. He wound up out of bounds on his shot, so. Got a nice little shove in there they didn't see. Tigers, Tigers extended out a little bit. Kiefer playing a little bit of safe basketball right now. Both teams have three. Both three teams have three uh, team fouls. Timeout Trojans with one minute to go in the ball game. It's 57-57. What a game. I'll tell you what, I'll guarantee you uh, – Colton Loomis was going to call some kind of a play over here from the sideline. Yeah. We got uh, B.J. Baker, trial attorney. If you're getting mugged and fouled, call B.J. Uh, 
Why have an attorney when you can have a trial attorney? And Jackson, you a tax service man? They're wound up. They're in Walmart. They're everywhere. They'll get you the best uh, tax refund you deserve. And taxes done fast your way. I saw on the internet where someone said they could smell their W-2s being printed. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were t- mentioned earlier, you're pretty excited about your tax refund. Well, I won't get one, but other people will. Maybe they'll spend it on me. <laughs> somebody, so, somebody for them must have hit a three somewhere that I missed. In here. Yeah. So what do you think's going to happen? What what kind of play are they going to dial up here for us? I think they'll probably use some time off the clock and try to go in and I would say something on that backside short corner. Dribble penetrate, kick it to the backside corner. And if we're in this man, you cannot be caught watching the ball. It's a 1-4 box set right now, and I'm, Kiefer's kind of confused on it. Stopped in a corner. He's going to drive on Donovan, pull up, and he's going to get the easy foul with 55.2. Well, uh, he fouled him all the way across till he shot, and then he just had good defense, I thought. Yeah, that was Johnson going to the line now, shooting two. He was probably trying to foul, and they wouldn't call it till he shot the ball. It was off balance and everything going in. It was just really a hope and a prayer on the shot. Yeah. Now, we got to get this rebound. Let's uh, keep him from pushing you underneath the goal. Out of block out. This rebound. He gets a second. Keeper goes up. All right, time to execute. We've, we've been playing well. We're 5-2 and two this year. We've won some really close games. i got a good feeling about this. Bryson Smith up fake, kicks back out top to Donovan. Guerrero into Donovan. Donovan, turn around. He's trying to go up. Off the glass, no good. Rebounded Kiefer. He did a good job fighting through all that traffic to get the shot up, but he didn't Uh-oh. take his time there. Uh-oh. Timeout taken by Kiefer with 26.1 seconds to go. Tigers are the number two seed in this tournament behind Kawita at number one. Kiefer coming in as number seven, and they're holding on to a 58-57 lead with 26.1 seconds to go, Gary. Yeah. Uh, now you're up against the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would try to get our players to go for a quick steal and then foul them if we don't get that. Uh, well, they haven't been hitting their free throw. They're probably 40% on the game on their free throws. Without keeping stats, I don't know. But So that's that's a good sign for us if we foul the right person. We're just at, right at, uh, oh, wait a minute. There's two more. Let's see. Five out of 12, just over 40%. Yeah. Craig, you're right. Math guy. Tigers got to get something here. Switch on the screen. There you go. Back court. We're going to get a block right there on, I believe that's Bryson. Yeah, it is. And they're going to call it on Bryson. And, Tried to thread the needle between the, the trap there and got away with one. Now, this is a guy that we've only seen at the line once, and I think it was a N1, and he finished it. So, <laughs> might not be the guy you want to foul. Actually, that's Owen Murphy. That's his first of the night. Is it? If yes. we can get this rebound, though, it's not going to be a problem. Tigers just need to. Now, we got to go for three. I know my who I whose number I call on this. Right there. It's got to be either number one or number 23. Uh, 9.5 seconds left on the clock. Tigers down three, 60-57. Let's see what Dwayne Jones can pull up here with uh, nine seconds to go and who he wants to get to three. Uh, yeah, that. They made a big telegraph handyman free throw there to pull up by three while ago. Actually, two. And uh, we put the Myers-Bernard foul on them, and <laughs> it didn't work out right. 
we were hoping they would miss both, uh, both those free throws. This uh, new rule on free throws, coaching, uh, I mean, coach, has changed the strategy here at the end of the ball game. It's, oh, it sure did. And I heard some college coaches the other day on a, on a broadcast talking about some of the things that's, that's been changed in basketball. And I read some stuff by some high school coaches, and there's some who like it and some who don't. Yeah, and some say it speeds the game up. Some say it doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. I think it just depends on the game. But I don't like it. I liked that one-on-one -on -one situation on yeah. seven. So here we go, 9.5 seconds. We need to get a good – have to go for a three-pointer, Coach. And try Ash McElvain coming off of a double screen probably. Try not to set an offensive foul. He's got to get it up. 2.4, that's good. They're gonna count the bucket. Tiger's gonna lose 60-59. Donovan Smith got the bucket. Well, you gotta give it Kiefer. They were right on defense. We, they just weren't giving us that three. Uh, and Bryson forced one up, but you had to. You know, that was your only chance to win, so. Well, Cash couldn't get open, and Zeke couldn't get open, so pretty yeah. tough situation. Yeah. It was uh, it was two pretty evenly matched teams, I thought, today. I just thought the Tigers gave up too many easy ones on the, the short corner and the backside dribble penetration, kick it. Uh, Tigers ended up with... Uh, Eight points on the game for Zeke Guerrero. We've got four points for Cole Robertson. 14 points for Donovan Smith. Four points for Bryson Smith. Four points for Miguel Rodriguez, lead scorer for the Tigers today. Uh, Jordan Daughtery, by the way, with two. 21 points for Cash McElvain. Yeah, and he had a chance to pull us ahead, and uh, he pulled up to shoot a jumper, and he just got hammered down low, and the refs just missed it. I mean, they just didn't see it. So those things happen. Goes both ways. You can look back. Just don't don't think the Tigers played hard enough in certain spots and, and stretches, and uh, ended up costing them. You know, it's. You, you look at Kiefer as a, a six foot or a, a class 3A team. They are a small school, but they're right there on the south side of Tulsa. They've got some good size in 6'5, 6'4, 6'4. And uh, they did a really good job on the boards tonight against the Tigers, and I think that cost them. So, yeah. Tigers will have to regroup now and come back with uh, I'm not sure who will be in the second round, but. If the seedings are correct, uh, so uh, while coach is looking up who we're going to play next. Well, it'll be either Wagner or Tecumseh. Wagner, the number three seed. Tecumseh, the number five seed. So. You know, it's not going to get any easier in the second <laughs> round. And that's one good one of the good things about this tournament. It's it's always been well represented by classes, but they've always had good competitive teams in it. Uh, we saw the first girls game tonight was Kiefer versus Wagner. Wagner took advantage of Kiefer because Kiefer's number one player, who's already signed Division One South Dakota State, is out with a knee. That's John Coons' daughter. And then he's lost two other players who decided not to come out and play after she got hurt. So, and that was a travesty. She was, what I understand, shooting a, a layup drill and got hurt. But now that, that game score was big, but not representative of the Kiefer girls basketball because they don't have three of their good players. So. Was that before the tournament champions? Yeah. That she got hurt? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we saw them play yeah. up there and they, they weren't the keeper I had remembered, and now I know why. Well, and that's why those three girls were part of the reason they were in the uh, tournament of champions to begin with. And when you get hit like that, 
uh, it's going to really, really hurt you in something like that because there, there was nobody up there that wasn't good. I mean, it was an unreal tournament. Uh, Tahlequah Lady Tigers coming up here next against the Purcell Dragons. And again, we're standing here on the end line above the stage area at Vertigris and uh, having a hard time seeing all the action out here over the rail in front of us. But uh, not a very good vantage point to do, do a game from. Very difficult game to do stats on. And uh, Lady Dragons coming in 7-0, Gary. Uh, Going to be a very formidable team with uh, a lot of uh, looking at a uh, lot of a lot of juniors. They're dominated junior-wise, and so this is a bunch of girls that's played together quite a bit. Class 4A, number 12, Purcell Dragons coming up next. And uh, watching them warm up, they look like they've got some size. And, uh, looks like they can shoot the ball. Uh, Didn't get any sizes off of the program that we received, but uh, uh, overall they look to be as, as large as us. Well, Coach, would you like to talk about the Tournament of Champions a little bit? I, I was so impressed with our Tigers last week. And, uh, Lady Tigers fought hard. I, I know talking with David Qualls uh, last night about the tournament champions, he said he was happy to get out of there with two wins. And uh, First time we've ever done that. You know, if you're going to go in there and, and expect to win all three, you better be pretty darn good. And the two teams that met in the finals, I think, were uh, Lincoln Christian and... Uh, I'm not sure who the other one was, to be oh, honest with you. I've drawn a blank. Hang on. Let me, I can, I'll think of that here in a minute. Uh, but, yes. They, it they, wasn't Sepulpa? Booker. Was it Sepulpa. Sepulpa, yes. I, I should have remembered that. My son's up there. But, uh, yeah, he, he was he was impressed. He thought the first ball game was a winnable ball game. I heard you make a comment earlier that you'd like to see us play Lincoln Christian again. I don't want to set up any kind of a bad luck deal here, but I, I think I think David felt the same way after talking. You know, Corey Rainwater didn't didn't score a lot, didn't score early in that ball game. Um, the Tigers shot what he thought was poorly at 20 some percent from three point range, and uh, not much better overall. So uh, I think they had 18 turnovers in one of the games up there. Yeah. It was and 15 in the other one. I think 15 in the Lincoln Christian game. So, you know, coaches like to say, let's hold turnovers to less than double figures. And if you can do that, you can win most ball games. These are high school kids. They're going to turn the ball over from time to time. You just hope to be the team that, that takes care of it, protects it the best. Yeah. And David wasn't happy about that. The, the turnovers were hurting them. And, you know, I've seen some of our earlier ball games and, in which we could have made a big difference in a ball game simply by not turning it over. So hopefully as the season progresses, they'll cut these out and we'll get into to real playing mode. Yeah, let's think, why is a turnover so important? Because well, it's, you it's can't a four make point. A three. It yeah. could be four or six points yeah. difference. The two, that you, two or three that you didn't get and the two and three that they do get Coaches also, and you know this as well as I do, Gary, you've coached for a long, long time. It's a whole lot easier to score off of a defensive oh, steal yes. than it is running your offense. So teams yes. like to be aggressive defensively. They like to force turnovers. And if they can force you into turnovers, you got to figure they're going to score on a percentage of those pretty good. Yeah, and, and we had some ugly turnovers against Lincoln that resulted in a layup on the other end, just like you're talking about fast break uncontested layup those are a lot hurt a lot more than some three seconds in a lane or something like that yeah uh, you just uh you give up one like that it's kind of like we saw here tonight uh, in the boys game uh, a couple of times i just thought they scored way too easy and somebody turned their back somebody was watching the ball on the back door cut those are things that we didn't consistently do before christmas and hopefully a little bit of it has to do with just not being 
quite ready. Uh, I'm not sure how much time they, the boys put in the gym during the break, but I'm, I'm sure Kiefer was the same way. But uh, yeah, well, uh, I'd like to play them ten times and <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. But, uh, it's not going to happen either. That'll probably be the last time we see them. Yeah, it's hard to. Uh, that's one of those games you just don't think you're going to lose. Yeah. But anyway, back to the tournament champion, Jaden Buttery uh, was second team all tournament team. Corey Rainwater, second team all tournament. Maddie Matthews uh, got an award for the highest percentage three point, three point shooting. shooting. Yeah. And so, got, got, a, got an award for that too. So yeah, scholarship. A scholarship some. somewhere. Yeah. So I, Craig figured out she had 53%, which is amazing for uh, three-point shooting. Uh, well, and, and again, you're talking about her shooting like that, and then you're talking hearing David talk about how we didn't shoot the three as well as we can. <laughs> so that means somebody didn't shoot up to par. That's definitely. But I'm sure they'll correct that, and the more games they get, the better they're going to get. So The thing is, makes Telequah hard to guard is that in that one game I think it was against Riverside uh, we had four four girls either in double figures or right at it uh, and then and then we had a collection of three or four other girls that were almost double figures combined so who do you guard on that team? Who are you going to focus on? If the Tigers are hitting, if Maddie Matthews and Taylor and Dick are hitting outside uh and Corey and uh, uh, Jaden are getting theirs inside like they're capable. We, we're going to be tough to, to beat. I mean, you know, we've got some good wins already. And, and uh, the uh, Booker T. Washington game, that's an excellent win for us early at home. And uh, Tigers have a, a, a stretch coming up, though, that's going to be pretty good, too. East Central, Bishop Kelly, Booker T. Washington over the next week and a half at our place. Tough games. Huh? All three, District 3 games. I think uh, we uh, doing our pregame show here for Green Country Sports Network, and we'll be right back.
And welcome back uh, to Green Country Sports Network. Getting ready to introduce the starting lineups for the night uh, for this morning's game. Gary, I can run through those Purcell starters here in a minute, but Matty Matthews starting for the Lady Tigers, number zero. Taylor Dick, a five foot four senior guard, number two. Jersey Retzloff, five eight senior guard, number three. Number twenty one, Jaden Buttry, six foot senior forward, and in the post, six one senior forward, Corey Rainwater, number twenty five. Starting for the Purcell Dragons, 7-0 on the year, Gary. Yes. Number 12 in Class 4A, going to be a formidable opponent. Their starters, and I don't have positions, uh, I do have class. A junior, number 5, Kenna Espinosa, Esperza. A senior, number 10, Jenna Avery. A junior, number 11, Haven Buchanan. A junior, number 12, Tinley Winters. And the last one is a, senior, a junior, number 23, and that's Hadley Harp. I believe I got those names right. Yeah. I'm not sure. But. High achieving teams. Telequa 7 and 1 on the year. And Purcell's 9 and 1 right now. 9 and 1. Nine and Thank one. you. Only and loss coming to Lincoln Christian Fish. Academy in the tournament. Yep. So. Uh, couple of good teams. Um, Lady Tigers get the first possession. Jade Buttry, no angle on the glass. Ball's going to come back to the Tigers out of bounds. Well, I just don't understand basketball anymore. She had a wide open layup. And she just got killed. Got hammered again right there and missed this one. I think we're going to get to the line on this one. Yeah. yeah. I guess the referees were not awake yet. Yeah. Butcher at the line, shooting two. And it was a Menard, <laughs> Myers Bernard free throw. And Teleco Handyman free throws. Got both of those coming in there. Lady Tigers up 2 0. Speaking about Purcell, 7 0, ranked number 12 in Class 4A. Uh, played some good opponents throughout the year. Yeah. A lot of juniors and seniors on this team, mostly juniors. We put a lot of pressure on them, trapped them, and they threw it out of bounds. So, our ball again. Taylor Dick bringing it up. Pressure right there. Bump foul. Two bump fouls in a row. Nothing called. Corey Rainwater gets it stripped. Hill ball. Possession's going to belong with Purcell. Purcell, I believe, if they, if I remember what David told me earlier, their point differential is over 20 points a game. Really? And they're undefeated, so that means they've beaten everybody by that. Moving the ball well against our zone. Uh, corner to corner. Baseline drive, throws it out of bounds. We'll take those, won't we? Harp to Avery there. Throws it out of bounds. Lady Tiger basketball. Second turnover against uh, Purcell. Our sponsors for Purcell. Oh. Reach in by number 23, Harp. 
on Jaden Buttry, knocks the ball out of bounds. Got away with the reach there, I thought. They really came to the ball a good that yeah. time. Purcell putting a lot of defensive pressure on us, aren't they? Yeah, there's been a few bumps in that defensive. Now there's a good cup of Jaden Buttry. Woo! Easy two. That offside screen, that's become one of our favorite uh, plays there. Good finish. Yeah, get that high post roll right there. And, and we forced a third turnover there out of the press. Back court call. Number 10, Avery turns it over. So Lady Tigers off to a pretty good start, 4-0. 627 to go. Forced three turnovers against Purcell. Setting up an inbounds play to Rainwater. Buttery down the middle, drives, kicks it to Jersey Ristloff off the edge of the backboard. Jaden Buttery saves it on the end line. <laughs> Bounced it off the Dragon, Lady Dragon leg there for to save it. Didn't have her balance. Yeah, she, Purcell's laying on the ground there. I bet she, oh no, I'm going to get killed here. <laughs> Tigers in their high four. Maddie Matthews inbounds to, tried to go to Buttry, got it touched and then came back toward her and a Purcell young lady stepped out of bounds and touched the ball. So. Well, it was 16 Maddie to Matthews go. for three. No good. Jersey misses a rebound. This is Purcell right here. They like to run out. Missed the layup there. That was Maddie Matthews defending that. Taylor Dick now. Corey Rainwater, baseline jumper good from 10. They must have called something before the shot here. I believe they called a foul, I'm not sure who. Jaden got that rebound and kind of buckled to the floor. I hope her knee's okay. Uh, I worry Lady about Tigers that all in time. a 1-4 low. Inside to Buttry, Buttry up and off the glass, good. Boy, she's going up strong because that girl Another turnover by the Lady Tigers. Jaden with six points already in the fourth turnover for Purcell and about the third turnover for the Lady Tigers. Oh. You're going to call a block on Jersey Retzloff. Jersey Retzloff. Holy cow. I thought Jersey was there. She, My I opinion like doesn't count, though, Gary. Myers Bernard foul. First on the free throw line for two Telequa handyman free throws. Kenna Esparza puts the first points on the board for the Lady Dragons. Got them both. Got them both. So uh, makes it six to two with 5:32 to go. Watch it! Watch it! Watch it! Watch it! Watch it! Watch it. Double team. Taylor Dick fighting it, and we're going to get a hell ball. Lady Tiger's going to have to read that double team a little sooner here. Yeah, this. Beat the double team. It's an easy score, usually. Here's Jaden Buttry on the roll off the inbound play. Two pointer, good. That was so pretty. Jaden well Buttry designed. has all eight of the Tiger points. 5 13 to go in the first period. Retzloff, oh. Guys. She had her feet set. They're going to call it on Jersey. She set a good, a good trap right at the line. Mm. Well, now, 30 second time. Did they out. call that on the Dragons, Lady Dragons, number three? Maddie was ready to take the ball in. Well, I, I'm going to hold off on that because I'm not sure. It looked like Maddie Matthews was ready to inbound that ball. I thought it should have been our ball, just dribbled out of bounds. Not a foul because Jersey was standing flat-footed there. 
the uh, those referees that just make the call all the way across court and don't come up to the score table, it's, it's hard to know. I know you know that from announcing the games. Yeah. So Jersey Resloff did pick up her second personal foul. Yeah. Uh, that was a cheapy there, I'm telling you, a ticky-tacky foul. And into the ball game comes Paisley Qualls, number 12. Good to see Paisley back. Yeah. Those knee braces look so uncomfortable. I don't know how you can trap if you can't stop flat-footed like that and have them run into you. Jumper from the free throw line up, no good. Rainwater on the rebound. Shot put up by Harp. Oh, nice backdoor cut, Matty Matthews. Yeah. I can tell you right there, without the dribble, she scores. Yeah. Myers Bernard, uh, foul. What's that you say, Craig? What's their motto? Myers Bernard. Hometown real estate team. Matty Matthews at the line, misses the first. Telequo Handyman is sponsoring that free throw. Come on, Matty. We need free throws. Got the second. Got the second. Nine to two with 441 to go in the game. Tigers got a trap. Oh, Jade Buttry. Oh, steps out of bounds. Steps on the line. It was close. That was a good trap. Created another turnover right there and uh, just couldn't quite come up with it. So we're running our 2 2 1 here. 23. Top five takes the three. Woo, she didn't hesitate on that one. Esparza gets a three. She's got all five of theirs. Corey Rainwater off the glass, no good. Gets her own rebound. Boy. Oh. Corey's a little off here lately on those shots. That's exactly what she wanted. Lady Dragon stepped between her and the ball, and I guess they thought Corey touched it on the way out. But... Esparza is going to take another one. No good. Misses everything on that one. Lady Tiger's going to come up with it. Ball out of bounds. Well, she looked like she was expecting to make that. Inside, Corey Rainwater, baseline, baseline drop step there and missed the bucket, but it's gonna get the foul. Great, uh, great move to draw that Myers and Bernard foul. I believe the foul was charged to Harp yeah. for Purcell. Telequal handyman free throw here. Corey at the line, chance to get her first points of the ball game. Ooh, got the first. Craig's got all the stats for this season there. Three fifty-three to go. Rainwater at the line, shooting her second one. Oh, in and out, no good. Rebound by. Buttry up and no good. Rebound, double team trap. Purcell breaks it. Another turnover. Maddie Matthews coming up with it. Taylor Dick at the point now, settling things down. Tigers in her 1 4. There's the roll. Jaden Buttry's going to come up with it. Taylor Dick for the Three. Taylor's first shot, Nailed Tiger it. three ball. Nailed it. Uh-oh. Turnover off the foot. Looked yeah. like a Purcell layup. I believe that'll be the, the sixth turnover yeah. against the Lady Dragon. Well, I'm amazed that they're this, this close, as many turnovers that they've had. Uh, Lady Tigers throw it away on the inbounds, Blatt. Yeah. Esparza trying to come off the screen at the top. Long three taken by... Oh, three-pointer by Esparza. That's her second. We had the rebound, and 
they got it back, and there's a three. Corey Rainwater is going to drive, score the easy layup. That girl that's guarding her cannot guard her. That was a good job by Corey. Yeah, Corey's just got to finish near the basket. Balls to high post, drive. Blocked by Corey. Rebounded by Corey. Long three attempt. Tipped out by Buttry, and here comes Purcell. Two-point basket, number 23. That was, that was a nice looking shot by her. Hadley Harp. 15 to 10 with 158 to go. Taylor Dick right down the middle off that high post screen. Got it to fall. Lady Tigers like that go-to play right there, yeah, Gary. Yeah, that's one of our favorites. And Harp comes back and answers on a dribble penetration. Pushes ahead, Paisley qualms. Paisley goes in, gets it stripped. Now, how do you not get some kind of contact on that? Right now, Purcell is just kind of out hustling us right now. Hart put up the first shot there, missed it, and rebounded by number 12, Tinsley Winters. And she was fouled. Not sure who by on that one, but Winters gets the first. There's Bernard, your Telequa real estate agents, sponsoring that foul. 17, 13, 122 to go. Missed the second. Dick with the rebound. She's pushing it, looking for Paisley Qualls on the cut. She goes up in, no good. Got bumped and no call. Corey Rainwater up and no good on the rebound shot. I don't know how Paisley didn't get a foul on that, Gary. I don't know. And then Corey gets one. 23 is attacking that ball uh, goal very well. Yeah, uh, I'd like to see Paisley just go up with a little more authority. And... Harp misses the first of two. She knows she's going to get fouls, just have to get Well, we had her. the same contact down there on Paisley on the drive that we had here with Corey, and yeah. they get a call and we didn't. Yeah, I don't know. I just think they had a better vantage point on this end. Harp gets a second of two. They pulled a 17 to 14 with one minute to go. Retzloff working it up. She's back in there with three Against fouls. Winters. She's gonna drive it to the bucket and really didn't have an alley there to go to the lane though, did she Gary? Well, she just forced contact. Yeah. I mean, Going to go to the line. She got fouled all the way down the floor, and uh, they weren't going to call it until she shot. So she was very smart to force that, force the ref to make a call. Oh, in and out. She's she's been a very good free throw shooter this year, though. Rims aren't very forgiving, though, are they? That ball hit all sides, and then she rims the first one off. Here comes the Dragons pushing it again. Two-point basket, winners. We're just getting out hustled right now. Got caught in a trap right there, Taylor Dick. Or out fouled, I guess. The referees aren't calling it. They're just, they're just whacking away. Yeah, we got to make better decisions to all those double teams. Here goes Corey on a breakaway. We overthrow, turnover Tigers, and Corey's going to pick up her second personal foul. Uh, let's watch that on instant replay. I believe it's pass interference on that. 15 yards. Yeah, I pulled her jersey out of her shorts. Well, a little better throw on that. We'd have probably scored an easy one there, but the ball was thrown a little bit beyond her. And... Okay, got really quiet here for this free throw attempt. 
Yeah, winners at the line, misses the first of two. Delacroix handyman free throw there as he missed that first of the two Jayden shots. Butchery checking back in. Corey's going to get a rest here with 33.7. And uh, Stevens is in the ball game for us. Jenna Avery returning for the Dragons. Guys, we've got it down to a one-point lead, and it's a tie ball game right now. Looked like it was just going to be a runaway early in the... Oh! Boy, good job by Jaden Buttry. Matthew! Three-point basket, Matthew! It took a tremendous effort by Jaden Buttry to get that ball out to her. Three ball by number 22. Somebody come help her. Whitaker with the three. So at the end of the first period, uh, we are up 20 to 19. In a very, oh, they gave him a two on that one. Very entertaining game. Yeah, uh, Purcell is very, very aggressive. Okay, we'll be right back. Green Country Sports Network halftime show. <laughs> that is literally the funniest thing ever. And then I said. <laughs> it wasn't, but this guy could use a win. Even if it's not as big of a win as I get with free Kasasa Cash checking. Kasasa Cash pays me a really high rate and refunds ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. So I feel like a queen. Has a mega bank ever made you feel that way? Or is it more like this guy? Take back banking with Kasasa Cash. Take Kasasa Cash at First State Bank. You're watching Telequel Tiger Basketball on the Green Country Sports Network. Today's game is brought to you by... Just the end of the first period, uh, very entertaining game, 20 to 19 where Telequa's ahead, and uh, we've got our hands full with Purcell here. Tigers have led the whole ball game so far, tied at 17 all just a moment ago. Another steal by Lauren Stevens entering the ball game to yeah. start second half. Very good fundamental defense on that uh, lob. Nice step around. Oh, beautiful pass, Taylor Dick to Jaden Buttry. Yeah, we, we scored eight in a row, and then we just went away from that play, so I'm glad to see that again. Another steal, Taylor Good Dick. Job, Taylor. Her and Maddie Matthews, and we turned it back over on the pass. Dad gummit. Somebody's got to get on this girl. Matthews with another steal. Intercepted the pass, cross court. Buttry's going to walk it up now. Center to Dick. Let's get everything set up. One four set. Trying to force that into the cutter, and it wasn't quite there. Uh, trying to get a little high and outside on that pass. Trying to hit uh, Jersey Retzloff on that cut. wasn't quite there. A little bit too much in front, and uh, pretty good per defensive pressure there. That's one of those, even if you catch it, well, what are you going to do with it? You know, it's kind of a tough spot. Ball tipped by Buttery. Be careful, don't pick up the foul. Another tip ball by Taylor Dick. That's how you stop penetration, have the outside drop down. But Tigers almost turned it over. Got the steal, take it down. Let's get a good possession now. Run some offense. Got Rainwater on the bench here for a while. Getting a well-deserved well rest. Picked up that second one. I'm sure David's just trying to save her a little bit. A lot of reaching on both sides of the fence here. Yeah, it seems to me. Real aggressive. Matty Matthews, three ball up, no good. Rebounded by Purcell's winners. Here come the Lady Dragons. 
Good job, Stevens. Blocked by Lawrence Stevens. Dribble penetration shot put up by Avery. Blocked by Lawrence Stevens. And so Lauren come in and made a pretty good presence known here as we start second period. Uh, Laurenator, is that what we used to call her? Three-point basket uh, all over the rim by Tinsley Winters. So they're in a man-to-man -man right now, full court. Somebody's got to come help us. A lot of contact. I, I, it's just uh, unreal that you have to just almost run over somebody to shoot to get a foul out there. Esparza picks up her. You just have to throw one up there and hope the referee's going to call it. Hey, there it is. Telco Handyman free throw by Taylor and Dick. Myers Bernard foul. It pushes out to a two point lead, 24 to 22, and we have got a great ball game going here. Yeah, Lady Tigers built a pretty good lead early, up 8 0 before Purcell scored, but Purcell's come back with another ball oh, touched by Taylor Dick, almost. recovered by the Dragons. Oh, Driving God. the basket that time, Jenna Avery. Oh, gosh. Got fouled by Jersey Retzloff. Yes, Jersey Retzloff. Boy, that was a cheap one. Now that's, I'm showing three for Jersey. Avery at the line misses the first. Free throw is going to be crucial in a tight ball game like this. Uh, Telequal handyman free throw gets second attempt here. This is the tenth free throw of the ball game already for Purcell, though, and she misses that one. Dick with the rebound. Got to make good, solid passes. Give your cutters a chance to go. Matthews Maddie. for a long one. Long three, about eight, ten feet out from the three-point line. Winners on the drive. And got the layup. So that ties it up here, 24 all with 4.34 to go. Winners with nine points now. And a very nice, good job by Jersey. You got attack ball. when they had a double team right there. Oh. What about the contact on that? Corey Rainwater returns, along with Paisley Qualls now in the ball game. Rebound Shot put up by Winters, no good. Rebounded by the Tigers. Taylor Dick now advancing all the way to the bucket, off the glass, no good. Corey Rainwater with the rebound. Retzloff for the look. Uh, rebound by Buttry. Buttry. Rebound kicked out to Taylor Dick. Tiger three ball. Great assist by Buttry. Good shot by Taylor. Taylor Dick down double figures for the Lady Tigers with 10. Is that her third three? Second. Second. She was hot at tournament champions. Dribble penetration in there by Harp. Off the glass, no good. Rebound by the Tigers. Retzloff on the left wing to Taylor Dick. 325 to go. Here's where we get in trouble. We get inside to Corey Rainwater. Back outside Paisley. No good. Over the top. Rebounded by Buttry to Rainwater to Dick on the drive. Woo! Got the two. That was some teamwork by girls that have played together for years. Buttry to Rainwater to Dick on the drive right there. Yeah, that was nice. Pushes out to a five-point lead. Maybe we can breathe a little bit. But that's... Lady Tigers on a 9-5 run right now, Gary. Yeah, it's been a really good one. Really good uh, game so far. Sometimes, you know, uh, it's, just, it's just tough. You look at Purcell, what are they, 2A? 
Purcell was 4A. 4A. Yeah, they're 4A. 4A. Ranked number 12 in Class 4A. They're a good ball club. Yes, they are. And we've seen they li they like to run. They like to push the ball as much as they can, and they're going to dribble, penetrate you to death. You got to keep your feet down. You've got to play smart on defense. I yeah. believe we've seen both teams get away with a little bit of what I would call reaching in and and, and tipping the ball out, but. You know, as long as they're calling consistently like that, that's all right. Just got to, if you know what to expect. Yeah. You think with three referees, they had a referee, you think that uh, they'd, they'd call more fouls, but they don't. End of all game now for Purcell, number 21. All right, correction, that's number 24. Three-point basket out there, Esparza. That good, quick ball movement there. We've gone back to our zone. Watch out. Now, Gary, that's her third one. Third three? Yeah. Well, she looks like she expects to make it. That, oh. Lady Dragon, I was trying to get in there in the ball game, picked the wrong number to begin with. Can't really see them from up here in the corner of the gym, but... It's number 24 entering the game for the first time, Bree Wren. They're going to call an offensive foul on Jaden Buttry. <laughs> kind of had him beat, got the bucket, but don't score it. Two-point basket, number 15. Went on defense that time. 23 is a really good penetrator. And she made uh, made some stuff happen. She's the one that hit Rendiz, Rendiz on that last one. Oh my gosh. Here we go, two on one. Oh, didn't handle the ball. Up for two, no good, rebounded behind, by yeah. Buttry. And she gets reach in from behind and got it tipped out. Taylor Dick gets it tape, tipped out. Wow, these referees better call, start calling something. Tori Ramwater can't handle the entry pass, tries to bounce it off of a Lady Dragon. Turns it over. That's a walk right there. She got away with it. Kind of went up, didn't have anything to do with it. Tried to pass it in the process. Got away with one. Go score on here, Corey. Tie ball game, one minute to go in the first half. 59, 57 and counting now. Purcell's like staying in this aggressive. Jaden Buttry, turn around, off the glass, in and good. Great pass by Corey Rainwater turn to around. find. That was a set play for the Tigers. Three-pointer taken by. So 32 Rand, seconds no go in the second period here. Tigers can stretch this lead into Corey Rainwater. Turn around jumper off. No, off straight in. Start to say off the glass, but yeah. she didn't hit anything but net. Lady so, Tigers up four, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to see. 11 well, seconds are holding up for the last, last shot. Good job, Jersey Rensel off on defense. Here comes the drive right down the middle now. Shot at the buzzer taken by Resendez. No good. And we'll be right back for the Green Country Funeral Home Halftime Show. Hello, I'm Dave of Green Country Funeral Home, the only locally owned funeral home in Tahlequah owned by my wife, Renita, and myself. We are also proud to be the only funeral home in the area with an on-site crematory to meet the needs of our community, your families. Our family at Green Country Funeral Home works to assist and guide you through the many details of your family's final needs and wishes. Green Country Funeral Home, where we don't work for a corporation, we work for you.
fitness beginner who is struggling to lose weight. Maybe you've tried tons of different diets, but nothing seems to work. Maybe you're looking in the mirror, you're not happy about the reflection and staring back at you. At Elevated Aesthetics, we help fitness beginners learn how to lose 15 to 20 pounds in six months or less, guaranteed without having to give up their favorite foods. On average, each client that joins loses at least 28.6 pounds inside of the program. So if you're interested, text INFO to 918-265-4477. That's 918-265-4477. Chat soon. If you suffer with foot pain, you should consider getting your feet adjusted by a hand and foot chiropractor. Hi, my name is Dr. Kelly Calloway, and I'm a hand and foot chiropractor in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. There are 26 bones in each foot, all of which can be adjusted. When one or more of the foot bones lose their healthy alignment, it can lead to a foot problem. We help conditions such as plantar fasciitis, heel spurs, and toe pain. A gentle chiropractic foot adjustment will restore healthy alignment and function to the joint and tissues in the feet. This will correct the underlying cause of most foot conditions. Our patients love having their feet adjusted, and you will be amazed by how good you will feel after you have your feet adjusted. Call our office today to receive your complimentary consultation for your painful foot condition. I'll take a grande, no foam, triple cap, double pump vanilla latte with three and a half ice cubes, slightly shaken, extra whip. Yeah, that's gonna be an upcharge. Great! This one is on my Casasa cash back checking account. Uh-huh. Casasa pays me cash back on everyday debit card purchases, plus refunds on ATM withdrawal fees. Go on, take back banking and treat yourself to monthly cash rewards. Get Casasa cash back at First State Bank. Hey, welcome back to the Green Country Sports Network. This is Coach Gary Wing with Coach Elsie Miller. Craig Wing, Ryan Hosley on the camera uh, when we can keep him out of the hospitality room. So uh, we appreciate all, all what they're doing. Uh, Coach Miller is uh, busy keeping stats for the first half. And we're in a barn burner of a game, Coach. Hey, did you get Corey for the rebound uh, down here? I didn't. It's, uh, as you can see, 33 to 29. And... Uh, Gary, I've got some scoring. Okay. Uh, obviously, from our vantage point, very hard to keep stats and keep track of shots and and what have you. We can't even see all the action here. We're we're about halfway up to the free throw line to have good vision. You've got a little bit better than I've got, but uh, halftime scoring in the ball game for the Purcell Dragons. We've got 11 points for Kenna Esparza, nine points for Tinley. Winters, two points for Ella Resendez, two points for Hannah Whitaker, and five points for Hadley Harp. That's the scoring at halftime for the Lady Dragons. Lady Dragons are five of 10 from the free throw line, so that's not been real good to them. For the Lady Tigers, we're six of 10, so ours could be a little better as well. Scoring for the Lady Tigers, Maddie Matthews with four, five for Corey Rainwater, 12 each for Taylor Dick and Jaden Buttery. Uh, it's, uh, at times, at times we've been lackadaisical on our passing, uh, and we're, we're really not used to playing teams that are, that uh, get as aggressive man-to-man -man as they are on us. They're doing a really good job now. We've both gotten away with a lot of reaching and, and tipping the ball and stuff from behind and things tonight. But they've been very consistent in the way they've officiated that. They let them play. The officials aren't trying to determine the ball game. Have they made perfect calls all night? Not all of them, no. Uh, we see things up here with a different view, vantage point than they do sometimes. But uh, all in all, I think the, the difference in the ball game right now, we're looking at a very good Class 4A team in the Purcell Dragons. They're not 7-0 and for no reason, and uh, they're playing a good, aggressive defense, and I think the Lady Tigers handle the ball in the second half, get some runs of their own going, and uh, like we did to start the ball game, 8 nothing. and uh, you thought, man, this is going to be a, a, a cakewalk, and next thing you know, it's it's tied, uh, or 20-19, to 19, I think it was, at the end of the first period, so 
um, and they fought back and actually took a lead at one point. So. Yeah, I was talking to one of the Purcell boys players, uh, Kylan DeFreeze, and he was telling me their conference is very tough, and uh, they they have a 4-3 record, but the teams they play, that conference is very tough. Yeah. And, I'm not uh, even sure who was in that conference, but our conference situation is totally gone now. We no longer have a Metro Lakes conference in basketball. Let me say that, the districts. We're, we're districts. They play a conference, we play a district still. Uh, which I don't know why the OSSAA doesn't just go ahead and put everybody in districts and go that route. Change them up from time to time so that you're not seeing the same people. Otherwise, let's stay with conferences. Yeah. I, I don't understand the big need Scheduling can't be an issue other than now teams that would want to cancel a game late in the year because it's snowing in Alaska or something like that. <laughs> We've got a couple. I've seen a couple of those in the last couple of years. Uh, they shouldn't be able to do that. In district play, you've got to play all 14 games. And so that's a difference. We're seeing about half of our conference is no longer with us anymore. We picked up Bishop Kelly. We picked up East Central, Booker T. Washington, and there's one more in there. I can't think who it is. It's, it's new. We still got Pryor, Grove, Collinsville, Claremore. Those are all. Claremore's a new one. Who? Claremore's a new one. They weren't in our conference last yes. year. Yeah, they've always been in the Metro oh, have they? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know who it is, Gary. I, I just have to, I would have to look. I can find it very quickly, but. Uh, yeah, uh, we were talking about the, their their competition, and and, and uh, Millwood goes in the state tournament every year with maybe a losing record or 500, and then they'll win the state championship because they play such a hard uh, schedule. And uh, I think Purcell is kind of in that situation. Coach, we have a minute to go before the start of the third period. Craig uh, is, is uh, kind of traumatized with all the technology issues that we've had today. It was a uh, very, very difficult to get on today with the poor internet and other issues. So thank you for joining us. Gary, I guess that, that was all the teams that we've had. Uh, we made the fifth one. So we have eight, and I was come, trying to come up with a, a seventh one in that group. but. It's not going to happen. Start second half. Uh, we can't see a possession arrow down here, but I, Lady we, Tigers are walking over. I think we're going to get the basketball yeah. start with. We've now. got some of our players are, that that can't play because of game limitations. Uh, Gilbert. Tournaments and, and yeah. some of those, yeah. Some of those aren't, aren't going to be playing in this. So here we go, starting the third period. Matthews for a three, had a nice look. Taylor and Dick got a hand on that backside rebound, but pulled out by Esparza. We're gonna get another foul. Who's that on? Matthews. Matthews. I did not see what she happened. She was backing down the floor. And got the foul because slid. a girl sat in front of her. But Taylor Dick got a hand on it. And a turnover by Purcell. Yeah. Started the ball game with about five turnovers in a row by Purcell and start the second half the same way. Turnover with a walk right there. Inbound to Buttry. I'm, a, I'm concerned about this game. As many turnovers as Purcell has, and we're only up by four. Now we've had a few turnovers, too. Corey Rainwater, they're going to call her on a baseline drop step walk. Basket fell, but no points for the Lady Tigers. So we are in a real soft man. Avery dribble penetrates. Loose ball thrown out. Still, still strumming for it at midcourt. 
Uh, let's call a hell ball, guys. Thank you. Good hustle. <laughs> Jaden Buttry is making that happen. Holy with her cow. Fantastic effort. Jaden versus three Lady Dragons right there. We finally get a held ball. Purcell called a timeout before the jump ball. So apparently it'll be Purcell's ball at half court when we come back. But it was not a jump ball or a held ball. Apparently. They're, uh, well, did they call a foul on Jaden? I, I don't know. It has to be either a hell ball or a foul. I think they called a timeout before they called the jump ball. Oh, my gosh. There has to be team possession before you can have the timeout. But they must have thought they had it while scrumming on the floor with Jaden. Yeah. I don't know how you get possession when you're both fighting for it, but so it is. All right, here we go. Purcell back. We really need to stop his penetration. Avery with a basketball. She's going to drive the paint, kicks it out to Winters. Back to Avery. Three-point basket. Her fourth. Her fourth, I believe. Yes, that was Esparza. They are really good about penetrating and looking for the open person. And get the glasses back on. Into Corey Rainwater. Corey one dribble, picks it up. Didn't go anywhere with it. No need to dribble. Corey's gonna drive baseline off the high post roll. And she's gonna pick up a foul. That girl can't guard her. She just needs I would like to see her try to score every time when she gets there. Was it 15? Can't, can't really see the foul down there. But she got hammered pretty good. Gets the first of two. Myers Bernard foul, and Corey came through the big free throw. Telco handyman free throw. Corey's sixth point. Lady Tigers up two. Ooh, got the next one. Got friendly roll there. Lady Tigers now 8 of 12 from the free throw line. Long three from the baseline. Long, no good. Rebounded. Corey Rainwater got in there along with Jersey. And the ball's going to be tipped out of bounds by number 15, Resendez. She's looking to throw long. Here's Maddie Matthews. One on three, wisely pulls it up. Taylor Dick underneath, up and under. Can't get it to fall. Rainwater with a rebound. Matthews for three, no good. Ball tipped out again. I believe we're going to get a Lady Dragon on the back. Oh, no. Buttry on the foul. Jaden Buttry on the foul. And I don't know how many she's got, Coach. I can't see. Well, I'm showing one. But that doesn't mean anything based on what we can see from here. We did a really good job of rebounding and kicking out. Had a good look at a three that time. This floor is 84 feet long, and we're about 84 feet from the free from the mid court line, so it's hard to see the officials down. Hard to see all the calls underneath that we can't see through the rail. So running jumper, no good. Lady Dragons, long three taken, no good. Corey Rainwater with the rebound. Oh. Corey throws long cross court to Jaden Buttry. Jaden mishandles, gets it up, still no good. Ball tipped slightly. Purcell, easy jumper, no good. Buttry with the rebound. Here comes Taylor Dick. Into Corey. Corey off the glass. That girl can't stop her. We just need to keep going to her. Ninth point of the ball game for Corey. Off the glass, no good. I believe Jersey Retzloff's going to pick up another one. Uh, that, we've got to, 
We've got to figure out how to how to deal with that penetration, Coach. Is that four uh, for her? Three or four? I've got four, but Purcell, second shot off the rebound. Long three, no good. Rebound Rainwater. And we're gonna pick up a foul here on Golly. Number five, that's uh, Esparza step, stepping in and reaching in on Corey. I thought they were going to call a foul on Corey for stepping through that and trying to jerk the ball away. She was being very aggressive trying to step out. Here we go. Maybe long. Can it go? No. Set play by the Tigers. 1-4 on their end of the, the other end of the floor. Forcing it into Corey. No good. Corey, go post up again. Do it again. Retzloff to Buttry. No roll. Oh, oh and Corey throws it away. On the break, guarded by Corey. Tipped by Buttry. Pick it up. Avery missed an easy layup there on ball tipped by Corey Rainwater. Backdoor cut, Matty Matthews. Nice pass by Jaden Buttry, Garrett. Yep, that was one of those one of those plays we see a lot. We were watching Vertigris at Tournament Champions, and they, they knew that play. Their coach was yelling every time we got ready to run that one. Matty Matthews gets the first of two. Yeah, we were talking the officials uh, last week and and they were the same way some of the referees thought it sped the new free throw deal sped the game up some thought it slowed it down so they don't they're you know nobody's knows for sure second handyman free throw Boom. got them both so lady tigers four for four in the third period here from the free throw line and we pulled out to a seven point lead it's been a while since we've been that big so 10 for 14 from the line for the Lady Tigers. Keep going, Tigers. Cut. Avery down the center of the lane. Throwing up an easy one right there. Missed it. No good. That was turnover Lady Dragons. Whew. Boy, they just come in there 100 miles an hour. And that fire, last shot was that by a new player, Gary, onto the floor. Lady Tigers on a breakaway. Jade Buttry stretches, can't get the layup to fall. That was uh, Del Toro on that last shot down there. Wild looking shot. Yeah. Throwing one up. Myers Bernard foul was a very tough, aggressive foul. The Lady Tigers getting it done at the free throw line in the third period. Got some subs coming in, coach. Five for five, six, seven. Paisley Qualls enters along with number 10, and that is Lakin Adams. Lakin, the only freshman on the Lady Tiger roster right now. And I'm pretty sure she's going to make something happen. They got she's her down there trying to rebound against this bigger girl, so we'll see a, what happens. She's a and we miss it. Heck, come it. I may have spoke too soon. Two point basket by uh, number 10, Avery. That shouldn't happen. 40 34, three minutes, 20 to go. Somebody Paisley move. Qualls. Somebody move. Paisley Qualls drives the off the screen on the wing, goes in, gets bump foul. I have no clue who he just gave that to. 15. 15? I think. All right. Telco handyman free throw coming up. Come on, Paisley. Oh. Good to see her back. You know, it's the depth she provides us gives somebody a chance to rest. Got the second one to fall. So Paisley's one for two at the line. Two point 
two-point basket. Number 15, Presendo. Lake Tigers just can't stretch it out right now. To Jaden Buttry off the glass, no good. Oh, That's a good shot for Jaden. Lake and Adams with a steal. Takes. Oh, oh golly. Ah. If I was a guard, I'd be so mad. She steals the ball, gets pushed out of bounds, and they give it back to her because she stepped on the line. A good hustle by her, a good reach across the body there, too. Here comes Avery on the drive. Oh, she walked. Yeah. That layup attempt Jaden Buttry had, too, she got hacked pretty good. I don't know. Avery tried to do it all for Purcell right now. A lot of dribble penetration, kicking out. She just hurriedly picked, picked up that foot, shuffled him a little bit. There's bump, bump. Corey Rainwater at point blank range, in yes. and good. Girl can't guard her. Nice pass by Taylor Dick there to enter into the post. Three, long three, short. Jaden Buttry with the rebound. Long pass forced ahead to Paisley Qualls. Got to control it. High bounce. Paisley Qualls on the baseline. She's going to drive and go to the hole. She's going to pick up a foul on, I believe, number 15. It is. That's uh, That girl's pretty critical to have out there. I've got three on her. Resendez. Paisley Qualls misses the first one off the back of the rim. And Stevens in for Buttry. 151 to go in the third period, 43 to 36, and uh, Qualls is shooting a uh, telecall handyman free throw coming up. Got the second one to fall. Got the second one. As she did last time. Got Retzloff back in the game for Qualls. So we're in our 1-2-2 uh, two, two defense here. Long pass, hard to handle in the corner. Back out, here comes Avery, dribble penetrate, kicks it in. Long three coming up, no good. Corey Rainwater with a push pass oh, to Lakin gosh. Adams and throws it out of bounds. Come on guys. Lakin just couldn't quite get there. It's one of those things with great pass and really Lakin just wasn't running as hard as she needed to right there, trying to stay in control. But you got to appreciate Corey for trying that path. 120 to go in the third period. High post. She's going to take it down the paint, pull up against Corey, blocked. Shot taken by number 23. Alan Dick. Harp, no the good. Smallest girl on the court came out with that one. Yeah, Taylor got that big rebound. Here goes Lakin Adams. Baseline missed it. Nice move there, though. Fake up inside and go baseline. Little guard in there playing in the block area. Shot off left side. Rebound by Corey Rainwater. We're going to pick up a foul on... I believe that's number 12, Tinley Winters. So are we shooting two shots now? That's the new rule, that's the fifth. Uh, On the fifth personal foul, foul of every period, we go to the line, so. So that'll be a Myers and Bernard foul. 40 seconds to go and we're getting ready to bring uh, Maddie Matthews and Jaden Buttry back into the floor. They've had a good long rest. Corey Rainwater gets the first of two. Tahlequah handyman free throw right in the basket. 12 points now for Corey. Got some good minutes out of those two young ladies. Yes. Lake and Adams and Lauren Stevens stepping in and doing their job. Lake and got a good steal over there. Yeah, just 
got driven out of bounds and Corey up and in, rattles around. Up to a 10 point lead with 38 seconds to go in this game. Oh, nice cut down the line. Lane by number 22, Whitaker. She missed the shot and got the rebound and got fouled again. Is that Rainwater on the foul? Corey Rainwater picking up her third one. Yeah, well this, they are, they are really penetrating and kicking out. We just gotta be awake. Well, we got on that dribble penetration. You, you got to show on that penetration, Gary, and then drop back, cover your man. Yeah. And we we've gotten beat a few times just by not showing. Corey Rainwater at the high post. Maddie Matthews going to spot up three. No good off front of the rim. Purcell pushing the ball, wanting to get a shot up quickly. At the end of three, it's Tigers 46, Lady Dragons 38. And we'll be right back to Green Country Sports Network. Family, it's bigger than bloodlines, stronger than DNA. It's the circle we draw around the people that matter, the people we care about and care for. Armstrong Bank, strength runs in our family. Built a lead several times, and it comes back to somewhere in that neighborhood of five to eight points. And, uh, entry pass to number 22, Harp, or correction, Whitaker gets the early two. Just got to stop letting them enter the ball to the post in there. Corey Rainwater, turnaround jumper, up off the rim, no good. Rebounded by... Esparza. So we're in our one, two, two, or three, two, however you want to call it. That free throw line is going to be wide open. Stay in there. They're backing off that high post. Oh, there's a walk. Got away with it, though. Put up a shot. That's number 24, Wren. And kind of a crazy shot after the walk and rebounded by Rainwater. Lady Tigers need to set a play. Six Looking to go three. double high. High post pass to Jaden Buttry. Back to Taylor Dick. Oh. Nice overpass by Maddie Matthews. Missed by... Corey Rainwater, wow. Coach, you'd love to see her get about 10 or 20 of those a game. Yeah. Esparza, long three, no good. She's getting her chances, they're just not falling down. Jaden Butchery with a rebound. Fired up there. Taylor Dick in the corner. Corey Rainwater, nice pass, Taylor Dick. 
That was a nice pass. She, she, holy cow, she threw that all the way from one corner of the court to the high post on the back side with two defensive players between her, Gary. That was a nice pass, the vision to see that. Really nice high lob pass in there. Corey was able to finish on that one. So Lady Tigers with timeout on the floor at 6.04, up 48 to 40. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm telling you what, I, my adrenaline's going, my heart's beating. This is a game that's still in doubt. By it's, it's a game of runs. Each yeah. team has put on a few small runs, nothing big. I think the biggest run the Tigers had was the 8-0 at the start, start the of the ball game. Start to get. Uh, Purcell is, is super well coached. They box out so well on a shot and, and just the fundamental stuff they do. And uh, mostly, mostly juniors, aren't they? Mostly juniors. I think a couple of seniors. I don't believe they have a single sophomore on the roster, but uh, they come from a, a pretty good conference out west a little bit. They've played a good schedule so far, and like we said, they come into this ball game seven and zero. Yeah. You know, Lady Tigers on a two-run stretch wins wise here, uh, coming out of the tournament of champions after having lost there in uh, the opening round to Lincoln Christian. So as we come out of the timeout, it's going to be Purcell basketball. Matthews, Dick, Jersey, Retzloff. Rainwater and Buttry. This is our, and we're in our man to man now. Let's try to keep them from penetrating on you if at all possible. 1 3 1 set by Purcell now. Like to go to the high post and jump. Can't get that high post now. Lady Tigers shutting that off pretty good. Yeah, this, uh, that 1 2 2 we ran, it was free throw was easy to get to, but not now. Esparza at the top with a basketball being guarded by Matthews. Lady Tiger shutting out the paint. Here comes. That was Whitaker. Maddie Matthews. Ooh, extra little hop right there. Taylor, Finished good on the break, but yeah, had a had a run out and I got called for a walk there. That's uh that's one we wish we had back. Oh, yeah, that puts you up 10. Uh-oh. Easy entry pass into the big girl, number 15 in there. And we just Resentness. keep letting them do that. Corey Rainwater on the other end answers. Corey Rainwater. Corey now was 17 in the ball game. Turnover by Purcell. Got a walking call. They've been really tough on post players today. Uh, it seems like every, I don't know how many walks we've seen on that turnaround drop step in there. Butcher bringing the ball up, guarded by 23, and she, 23 really impresses me. Got to dribble, got to get it going. Backdoor cut, Maddie Matthews up, and not going to get it to fall, but Esparza. Is going to pick up the foul. <laughs> uh, Buttry made a really nice uh, pass from almost a half court to Matthews going back door. And, uh, she had to thread a needle to do that too, but uh, it was a good pass. Could have been a little bit quicker. Maddie Matthews gets the first. Maddie now with seven. These are all important right now, aren't they, Coach? Lady Tigers with three Pushes young ladies. Pushes out to that 10 point lead we were wanting a while ago. Yeah. Lady Tigers with three double figure scorers so far with Rainwater 13, Buttry 13, 12 for Taylor Dick and Maddie Matthews is inching up there with eight now. So this is, this is our, this is our senior lineup right here that we've uh, played with for basically three years. So. Avery dribble penetrated right there. Tried to go to the post girl in there, number 11. That's Haven Buchanan, and she couldn't handle it a little bit high. Lady Tiger's going to bring the ball in on the end line. Setting their 1-4. Here we go on the long pass. It's 
Taylor Dick didn't realize she had the uh, wolf behind her. Purcell must really be fast, Coach. They were closing that. We had a. Well, they've got a very good track program down there. I know that. Oh, great Two point basket, Jaden Buttry. Great inbounds pass. Jaden with her 14th and 15th point of the game. Avery on the drive past Corey. Finds the winners and she misses the easy shot. Pushes out the 12 point lead here as we're coming down, trying to set something up here. Corey Rainwater on the cut and she's gonna get hammered, knocked to the ground by number 12. Tinley winners. I can just hear their coach now at practice. Do not let them have a wide open layup. If you're going to foul them, foul them. And, uh, she did. <laughs> Corey, the only Tiger on the free throw lane right now. Ooh. She's been like clockwork so far. So Myers Bernard sponsoring that foul. Lady Tiger is going to give her the benefit of the, you're going to make them. Hometown realtor. What a game we are having. Where you got them both? Well, we're, we pushed it out to 14, biggest lead of the game. Corey's 18th and 19th point of the ball game. So she's got 19, Jaden 15. And we'll be right back, uh, Green Country Sports Network. State representative. Myers and Bernard, your hometown real estate team. Pro Mortgage Associates. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. First Baptist Students. NBJ Baker, trial attorney. Thanks for watching. And welcome back to the Green Country Sports Network. 329 left in the fourth quarter. 329 in the fourth. We stretched a, an eight point lead after three up to 12 now, or 14, correction. Uh, biggest lead of the ball game yes, for the Lady absolutely. Tigers. So good stretch begin, right here. Beginning to pull away a little bit like I kind of thought we maybe should, but you know, there's been enough turnovers and enough mistakes in the ball game that we can still play better. And I, I, I think as this tournament progresses, we're going to have to see the Lady Tigers take care of their possessions better. Every possession has to be a score. Yeah. Esparza in the high post now, a little guard in there. Avery with the basketball out front. Finds the short corner, tipped out by Rainwater. She was, she was very aware on defense. That now, time. Esparza being guarded by Jaden Buttry at the top, that makes a big difference. She tipped that ball out, and they had, to, they had to reset. Rainwater on the steal. Yeah. Quit picking up your dribble. Taylor Dick on the drive. Avery on her. She reaches around her. No call. Hmm. Now, I, I'm going to complain on that one. Gary, she reached her from behind and literally knocked the ball out with both arms around her. Yeah. That had to be a foul. Yeah. I think the only thing Taylor could do is just stand up there. If she stood up, that would force a foul. Corey Rainwater splits the double team. If the ref's not going to call it, uh, it's tough out there. Oh, goodness. She literally did push off a little bit, but that doesn't make up for the bad call right before that, the no call. Yeah. Jeez. It just, isn't it amazing? You can push them and push them all the way down the floor, but if the offensive player pushes off, any, that's a foul. <laughs> Craig talks about that all the time. Yeah. One fifty-one to go in this game. Fifty-six to forty-two. It's starting to breathe a little easier right now. Harp took that running 
jump shot right there and miss. Avery gets it blocked by Rainwater on the inbound play. She puts up a short jumper. Rainwater gets a hand on it. Lady Tigers now. Maddie Matthews at the high post. Rainwater out top getting a screen. Taylor Dick for a woo. Lady Whoa. Tigers three ball. Taylor Dick. It looked like she was standing up in the bleachers from where we're at. But well, I couldn't see the bleachers oh, in that corner that over was there. That a great from where shot. I'm at. Big three. Uh, dribble penetration goes in against Corey Rainwater. Corey wisely backs up, hands up, forces a bad shot, and pulls the rebound. I think Purcell's just about circle of wagons here. Jersey Red Sloth's got to get rid of it here before you get to five count. Taylor Dick finds Corey. We're going to get a bump foul on Avery. Myers, Bernard, your local hometown realtors are sponsoring that foul. Give it to her. Boom. Overpass. Uh, a little tough when she's got her leaning on her. Taylor saw her, though. I like that effort. That was Thompson, Hannah Thompson. Or, uh, excuse me, Alyssa Thompson, number 25, taking that last shot. Rebounded by Lady Tigers. 25 seconds to go in this game, and our Telequah fans are starting to clap it down. Just moving the ball around. Lady Tigers probably won't even attempt to go score here again. Boy, this is a fun time to be a player when you when you know you got the game won. And... There we go. Final score, Lady Tigers 59, Purcell Lady Dragons 42. And they made us work for it. Hate to see that in your first game of a tournament because you're going to need that energy. Gary, that ended up a 17-point ball game, yeah. Yeah, and but... I'm with you. <laughs> I didn't think it was that many points. <laughs> it, it just, there's no way it could have been because of the effort that uh, the, the Lady Dragons put in, and uh, the Lady Tigers also play it hard. And uh, like you said, also, we're, we're down a couple of players that would normally come off the bench for us yep. because of the tournament rule situation. So yeah. those young ladies are sitting watching. And uh, Anyway, we have some unofficial scoring for the Lady Tigers tonight. Maddie Matthews with eight. Taylor Dick with 15 points, had three threes on the day. Two points for Paisley Qualls, 15 points for Jaden Buttry, and 19 points for Corey Rainwater. So pretty good night end up the day with, for Corey. Glad to see her get out and get some points. And, uh, I can see several situations out there, Gary. We miss some that we normally make, and I think the Lady Tigers will be better prepared, hopefully with a little bit of game experience behind them after Christmas, we'll come back and play Friday at 3.30 p.m. against either Manford or Tecumseh. Yeah. Tomorrow evening, we'll be right back here. Both those teams are Tomorrow very good. Tomorrow morning, actually, the boys will play at 10 o'clock. Is that correct? The boys are playing at uh, 5 o'clock. Uh, no, yeah, 10 you're 30. right, 10.30. 10.30. 30. Okay, so we'll probably be live about 10.15 then. Well, uh, Craig worked so hard getting this thing going today. The technology's been awful. So uh, you all at home, we're at the end of the court, and uh, <laughs> that's bad. But the worst thing is we're, we can look right in at the hospitality room and see all the food. So. That's the worst part, oh, I guarantee man. you. I, well, you I haven't been smell it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Craig, thank you for all the work you did putting this in. Uh, we got started late by about what first three, four, five, six minutes. Well, I, yeah, I we don't missed, remember. What was it? Five to nothing or five to two when we got it up? But yeah, that's it. Doesn't happen very often, but uh, I think think we got it figured out. We'll be good to go tomorrow. Good deal. S some gyms are just that way. I, we've had easier times in, in some gyms than we do others. And I remember coming up here last year and. 
I think we kind of had a little bit of issue there. So yeah. Yep. It's not All right, original. gentlemen. Well, have you done stats yet? I've given our points. Okay. Uh, All right then. Well then, let's sign off, and we'll see everybody tomorrow morning. Thank you. Green Country Sports Network. Signing off.